Hello everybody, this is Mithril Zenith. I'm pretty sure I've fixed my window settings now. Last time I noticed it was cutting off the right, it was doing some weird stuff to the bottom, yeah. That was not intentional, that was just me not really figuring out OBS very well. Anyway, this time, while I'd considered grinding... Pressing the wrong key. While I'd considered grinding a Thief Shrine for Angel Rings because doubling your stat on level ups is insanely good, no one wants to see that. I don't want to do it, personally. It's freaking boring, and it gets to the point where like no one's gaining experience. So, why don't we just move on? Into Graham Valley. Okay, this level. This is where things get a bit tricky. Do I have all my units? Yeah, I do. I'm just not used to having only six units. As you see, we have a mercenary with a leather shield. Leather armor. Leather something. He has a lot of defense, a lot of speed, a lot of power and skill. He's he's dangerous. He, this guy will wreck us. Like, remember how overpowered Alm was? He wrecks Alm. Yeah, that's, that's what we're dealing with here. Luckily, the rest of them are pretty weak. We have... An archer, again, but again, power 9, speed 2, not much. Let's get on with it. Let's fight. Now, these mountains you can actually walk through with most unit types. It just takes forever. Because they take like four movement squares, three or four movement squares, each point of movement, so most units can only move once through them. Here, I might as well begin our march to the right, and here it goes. Now, if this was, you know, a newer Fire Emblem game, they'd have probably some story to go along with this encounter. They'd name the villain, even if it's just like a sub-boss, and have some fun quotes here and there. But yeah, nope, this is all we get. I am looking forward to Echoes, and I'm wanting to see how well they recreate the game. I'm honestly wondering how closely they stick to the original levels and formula and how much they vary. Because on one hand, there's, there's benefits to either, either way. They are being very defensive in terms of this. They're just like, okay, I want to move exactly here, so I'm going to wait my turn in line. Okay, so here is where the danger cutoff is. And yeah, I was looking up the different characters, because I wanted to make sure I didn't make horrible mistakes. And yes, Cliff is the best mage. Followed by Grey. Grey, Grey is middle all around, but starts good. Cliff starts weak, but gets really strong. And Robin apparently just kind of sucks. And apparently his name is also Tobin. But Robin in fan translations? I don't know. Look. This is what you got. This is what I have. This is what's available. This is what we're dealing with today. I'm pretty sure fighting on the mountain gives you insane amounts of defense. I'm just gonna let this mercenary do his own thing. He's gonna come to me and then... You know, we're gonna sort all this out, but... He scares me. He's quite dangerous. 7 speed, 8 defense, like 10 power, or was it 8 power? Whatever it was, an insane amount of power. And it's our first fight as a cavalry, as a cavalry, as a cavalier. Doing great! <laughs> oh, I forgotten how I wanted to start, it, start this episode, maybe I'll start the next one like that.
Luke can, it's not like a Luke can reach. I think some time to finish the job. But yes, archers are amazing. Why? Three base range. Apparently a high critical rate, too. If you give them a bow-type weapon, they get five range. They're kind of insane. Black magic, fire cost a hit point? Yes, it does. Do we know what power it has? We certainly don't. I think it's like plus two or something. But it takes off their M defense instead of the normal defense. So it roasts them hard. Actually, uh, Cliff has decent defense. Especially for a mage. Our defense is not bad. I mean, Luca has insane amounts of defense. Um, I think it was a Luca, possibly Lucas. Depending on your translation. I don't know. Look. Oh, the spam rec Wait, does Recover give me experience? I don't remember. I completely forget. I think I want to be feeding experience to her, though. So I know I will need her higher level spells. Look at this giant clutch of units. They're still all level 1. They're, I think, the exact same units we've been fighting the entire game so far. The good news about fighting this guy over there is that if we kill him, we get the leather shield, which boosts defense by like three when worn. Pretty good. Um, Robin or Tobin or whatever you want to be called. You have a horrible hit chance. How are you an archer? It might have something to do with me attacking at three range instead of two. I don't remember if that's in this game or if that's just something in other games. Let's march Palm in because he can take it. Counters, Palm dodges, Palm finishes, and boy does he finish. Seems the fire. Every cast of fire costs one hit point. That's the bad thing about mages, is that if you have a mage with high speed but low power, better hope he has high hit points, because he's gonna die pretty quick. Luka attacks. Nine damage. He counters. One damage. Wait, look at that defense. I love Luka's defense. Soldiers become, what was it, general, I think? Knight? Yeah. They become... Yeah, Soldier becomes Knight, becomes Baron, I think? Anyway, either way, yep, we are wrecking them. For now, like I said, I just hope that I can wreck these guys enough so that way when Mr. Mercenary of Death comes from behind, I'm not instantly screwed. Recover magic. Do I get experience? No, you don't. Because getting experience for healing is a new thing. So the only way Claire's going to get experience is either from the group experience at the end of every mission, or by fighting herself. Hmm. Are she's attacking in melee? Perfectly fine. If anything, he was almost more effective there than he was shooting at a, at a range. I think this music's pretty cool. Repetitive though it may get. And trust me, it can get a bit repetitive. You've probably already gotten tired of it. Oh, what's he doing? He's retreating? Yeah, I think that's the guy that got hurt. AI as such, if there's a healing point on the map. 
if they take more damage than like half their health, they will run towards the healing point. And my fingers were not on the right piece there. But yeah, he had 18 points left. So let's. Um. Yeah, let's. You know, who should finish him off? Well, it's certainly not gonna be. Robin. But at least we traded blows with the archer. Yeah, this archer is gonna be a not happy person to fight. I want Claire to get some experience. No idea if she's gonna hit, because like I said, no sprout too, I'm pretty sure is just flat out 50-50. Eleven. Oh yeah, twelve hit points. Whoops. I made a mistake. I messed up. You chase down this guy. He's dead. Twenty experience. This archer's in a mountain. He's gonna be fun to fight. I think both of these thieves are going to run away. I just need to down this archer because literally if he... Hey! Thank you, Gray, for getting criticals. I got a ton of criticals this map. What's up with that? Might not be as well known, but it still is that good classic NES music. With just really simple melodies and percussion. Just pop, 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 pop. Much as I feel like healing would probably be the smart decision, Claire needs experience. 50 50 shot, gets it. And of course, Nosferatu heals her, which then means she can heal other people. How are we going to fight this mercenary? How are we going to engage? We have a turn or two to set up before he wrecks us. I should place all in a position and be healed next turn. So I just noticed he's a bit low. I think I, just, I should just make a bit of a defensive stance, wait for him to come to me. This is like the first hard fight of the game. This mercenary right here. I remember getting a bit wrecked by him before because I'm like, Alm's oh, invincible, he can do it. And I sent him out and luck was not on my side and Alm um, had to run away. Quite far away. Good news is that at the very least, unless he crits, no, I've said that he's totally going to do, he shouldn't be able to one-shot any of my people. Because this game, Fire Emblem Gaiden, is very, I don't know, reserved in its stats? I mean, especially compared to uh, newer Fire Emblem games where, okay, you just get insane stats and then you one-shot everyone um, until you fight an enemy who one-shots you. And that's the game. Welcome to my love-hate relationship with um, Awakening. And a bit of fates. Four. So attack here. Right by the little rocks. Thank you, little rocks, for helping me know where I'm going. I think what I want to do is just set up an ambush there so we can't fight in a mountain or a forest. Three 
damage, 2 damage, 3 damage. And the mercenary also has higher hit chance. When I first played this game, I thought, that guy has to be, like, a recruitable guy, right? He's too powerful not to be. But no. Nope. He is just flat out a dude who wrecks you. 8 defense, 9 attack. I think I'm better, honestly, just surrounding him, trapping him, so I, so he can't kill my guys and then picking him off with my archers. That feels like my only real way to go. Let's see, if I move here, end my turn. Move there. Maybe this is a dangerous spot, but this is fine. Come on, hopefully his magic defense isn't great. I feel like you need a mage to kill this guy without it taking an hour. And it's still probably going to take an hour. I just hope it doesn't. I sincerely hope it doesn't. Um, let's not fight the guy to your death. Thank you. Oh, hit points to heal. There's not even hit points to heal, but it'll let me cast it. I don't even get experience for it. Welcome to Fire Emblem Gaiden, everyone. I guess just welcome to older games in general. I like making fun of it because it's the game I'm playing right now. But the fact that I'm playing it shows you I still enjoy it. We mock the things we enjoy, because otherwise life would be very sad. One sec, Lucas, what are your stats? 6 defense, 11 power versus his 8 defense, and how much power? 9? Well, he's gonna get 2 shots on you, no matter what. But I can at least trap him like this. Allowing Cliff to pick him off. And allowing Robin to take a pot shot at him. Nice, just about as what I expected. And here's the thing. I mean I could heal on, but that's not gonna give me experience. I'm gonna kill this guy. And I get just what I need. Work is slain and Silk levels up. And she takes the leather shield. Skill up plus one. Congratulations. Let's give that leather shield to someone who's gonna be in the fight. Like Gray. How am I doing on time? 18 minutes, not bad. Not bad at all. There, see. Let's rest. Oh yeah, rest is where you just in later in later maps the enemy moves after you move. So sometimes if you don't want to move a place, you rest and then the enemy will just move. It's actually pretty interesting. Well, enemies at the fort. Let's charge the fort. It's a pretty small fort. Uh, anything notable about these guys? Yeah, that archer has a steel bow, meaning he has no speed, but he has 12 power and 5 range is the important part. We have soldiers with 10 power, 5 defense. Are all these guys the same? One sec, maybe the- why do I keep pressing that button? Um, yeah, they all look the same. Okay, let's do this. So this archer is gonna shoot this square. Let's see, tree, diagonal, up two. These squares are danger squares. That archer's gonna wreck me. The good news is, I kill him, I take his bow, I have five range. Also, I guess another piece of decent news is that because he's wielding the steel bow, he has, like, no speed. Not that it really matters, because, I mean, Robin's speed is decent enough anyway now, but if I were to, say, get in an archer fight with him, I'd be hitting him twice for every one time he hits me, or shoots at me, because 
Hitting, as we've seen, is not a guarantee. It most certainly is not. See, so that's the diagonal line of his aim. That makes me sad. So just a full four move. Sweet. I can just back up and fight at this tree. I'll take it. Get in a decent position to charge up and take this fool out. Yep, this is what I meant when I said that Fire Emblem Gaiden is more about holding a strong, solid stance than it is about actually running out and killing everyone. Look at that enemy soldier armor detail. That, like, skull helmet. That looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of wish I was on their team. Just so I could have that awesome armor. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One step away. I am one step away. Why did I do that? I don't know. I just did. Soldier dodge. Twice. But because he's apparently... Amazing. I didn't realize we were fighting Neo here. Or maybe the Skull Mask should have been a tip. Here's the danger place. And a diagonal line upwards from there. So we can march Gray in, he's gonna finish him off. Or I'm gonna speak too soon. But he's not gonna take much damage because of the nice leather shield he has. Slain, Gray gets experience, and we move on. Unfortunately, because of what I've done here, I've put Robin into a bad position, so I'm going to put Palm forward to hopefully allow him to block for that. And sure, why not? I'll recover my mage one hit point. He can't regenerate it, but I can steal it from other people with silk, so let's do it. I also feel like the AI, at least in these early levels, is really set. Sorry, that's my face. I feel like the AI is really set on just killing Alm. Because they just focus him like crazy. No other. That archer hurts. That is no lie. That archer just flat out hurts a ton. I need to kill this guy. I need to be able to move up. And puts Cliff in the line of fire, but he can survive because he has more hit points than all. No, Alm has more hit points, but he has the second most hit points on my team. He's my mage, because he got like plus six on his level up. Hey, I'm not complaining. Lucas, go! Luca. Luca. I don't have quite as cool skull helmet and spiky shoulder pads, but you don't need it. Because you get one luck. Thanks, RNG. I knew you could do it. is, do I begin my shootout, or do I pick up this soldier who's about to kill me? Either way, I recover Alm, because he needs it. Honestly, I feel like the best thing I can do is just engage the soldier, and start shooting at that archer, because until I do... But as you can see, a leather shield turns an alright cavalier into a pretty mobile tank. Fire on the guidance, everyone. The magic of multiple equipment types, really. No potions, so, I mean, kind of, 
Yes, critical! Got it. I have seen, though, where he does the critical move and misses. It shows that crits and hits are rolled for everything. The crits and others roll if it hits, but it's rolled at the same time. No. Okay, so I can deal 12 damage versus his 9. I have a better chance of just dealing 6. But... this is not... Oh wait, never mind. Never mind. He has a healing platform! I'm not happy about this. As you can probably tell. Silk can take a hit. Silk is going to restore Robin. And then we're gonna move on from there. We're going to figure out what the heck I am doing. Seven? Okay, so trees do take up three for cavalry in this game. Hmm. Do I even bother trying to attack him? I don't know. I mean, look at my hit chance. Then again, this is Fire Emblem Gaiden RNG, everyone. There's always a chance. What's our motto? There's always Talking like that? No idea. Yep, he heals. And the fight continues. I think I'm gonna finish off this battle, explore the fort, and that's gonna be the day. The episode, rather. Because that's gonna take me just over half an hour, I think. Unless this fight. Thank you? I mean, he didn't move or attack. I must have triggered the below half AI must heal no matter what. Archer counters, great finishes. See how good archers are in this game? Five range, they can still attack in melee. Well, I think they might get an aim penalty. They're just awesome. Come on, Robin. Got it. Archer slain, 28 experience. That makes me sad. Why you no level up? I was made sad. Cliff is given a perfect opportunity to roast a guy alive. Apparently he has equal speed. Six speed. Three speed. So using fire slows his speed by three. At least. Good to know. Good to know. Yes, now that Robin has a steel bow, he can start playing sniper. Attack! This guy's gonna run back to his stupid healing platform unless I kill him now. Got him! Wreck his face! Press the right buttons at the right times. And end turn. Awesome! I've been saying that a lot lately. As you can see, I'm probably running out of things to say. Critical! Who needs experience? Silk always needs experience. Cliff could use some experience. Lucas fine. Robin needs to just hit someone. But he can shoot that far. Granted, his aim sucks when he's shooting that far. Actually, never mind. It's not when he's shooting that far. It's because that's a healing platform this guy's standing on as well. His luck increases. He's stupid. Platform. Sorry, I'm yawning. I'm just so bored. Actually, I'm not really. This is not an issue. It's a non issue. Use fire. That is something useful, though. Spells, at least most spells, don't seem to factor in 
environmental defense boosts. So, person's in a forest, person's on a healing platform, doesn't matter, just use a spell. Which is why Nosferatu has a 50% hit chance. Interesting to note though, I think there's something with, I don't remember if it's the final boss or one of the, like, the semi-final boss of the game, but he can only be hurt at certain times. I think, was it him who was every four turns or something? I don't remember. Yeah, he's only hurtable in limited times or certain circumstances. I think, yeah, that's why. You need to get Alm a specific sword or something, and that way Alm's able to kill him. But the other option you can do, the other way to kill him, is by using clerics with Nosferatu. Because the way that the game calculated it, his invulnerability, I guess, for lack of a better term, is basically just they made you unable to hit him. And they changed all the spells. Well, adjusted that. But they did not change Nosferatu. Because Nosferatu is literally deals damage equal to your magic power, or up to your magic power, heals for the amount of damage dealt. Fire, as you can see, takes away at least three speed, but adds three magic power. You just sort of figure these things out. It's like old school <laughs> adventure games. Who knows how to do this? I don't. Just figure it out. But eventually you do. And Robin's fast enough. One sec, he has six speed. How much speed does he have now? Five. So it increases power by three, increases range by two, and only drops speed by one. I think that's a fair trade. Well, this is gonna be a fun fight. The soldier is literally going to do nothing but sit there all gosh darn day. He didn't even move out to attack me when he was full life. And I'm just gonna have to pick him off. Bit by bit. Gain some experience, let's do that. Of course. Of course you miss. 50%. Uh, do I want Robin to steal the experience? I mean, I want either Alm or Silk to get it, honestly. Maybe Cliff or Clive, as his name is, I think. I forget. Silk, let's do it. 50, 50, we're just flipping coins now. Landed heads. You got it. 35 experience, not bad. Soldiers are conquered. And now, we can move into the fort. Look at this. Listen, look at, listen to this triumphant music. And who's here? There! There, the Knights of Sophia. Old brother Clive. Okay, Clive is different. Clive leads liberation force. Let's go to the base together. Peg Knight Claire. Peg Knight? Yep. Apparently. Okay, first of all, apparently the, the group experience really did a number. But apparently. This, this feels like a trope in several Fire Emblem games. Oh, you have a Pegasus Knight. We're gonna imprison them. But as soon as you rescue them you have on your side. Like, they have a Pegasus as soon as you rescue them. Even though they're just chained up in a building somewhere. Happens in Gaiden, happens in Sacred Stones, at least with one of the paths. Branching paths is a thing in Sacred Stones. Anyway, we have a Bolt Sword. And since no one else can use swords, since it didn't level up anyone to Mercenary, probably should have done that. Looks like Alm is gonna have it. One sec, let me check his speed. With it and without it. Speed of 6, speed of 3. Power 10, power 15. Looks like it's the same. A thing to note here the Bolt Sword, 1 uses magic damage, 2 has a set power of 15. And three is just wonderful. 
because it's like you have, like, a mage that doesn't cost hit points, and it's also Alm, who, as we have seen, is amazing. I think that's it for this time. I'm just gonna give you a little peek at these bosses. Slater and Dozer. Cavalier, Soldier. I mean, looks like we're gonna have a fun time marching to Liberation HQ in the next episode. Thanks for watching everyone, I've been Mithril Zenith, the game has been Fire Emblem Gaiden, and I hope you have a wonderful day. See you later!